Monkeypox is an orthopox virus. It is in the same virus family of viruses that include smallpox, people are very familiar with, and vaccinia virus. And that vaccinia virus is important because it's used in the vaccine that helps prevent smallpox and monkeypox. The symptoms of monkeypox are actually very similar to the symptoms of smallpox, but they're much milder. A typical syndrome with monkeypox, people will start off with fever, muscle aches, fatigue, kind of general nonspecific viral infection symptoms. And then after about a day or two of those symptoms, they can start to develop a rash, which classically began on the face and the arms and legs, and then maybe moves to the trunk. What we're seeing with this outbreak that started this year is that the symptoms can be a little bit different. Sometimes people don't have that initial fever and muscle ache. They may just start off with a rash and the rash may not be as dis distributed throughout the body. They may only have a few lesions. And many of the people in this current outbreak have lesions that are in the genital area or perigenital area. So it's a little bit different than the classic presentation we're familiar with from prior outbreaks and infections with monkeypox. So that's a good question. Times to seek medical attention. One, if you know that you've been exposed to somebody that has confirmed monkeypox, it's important that you reach out to your medical provider. Now, public health might be reaching out to you because currently they're doing contact tracing on people that have known exposures so they can provide them with vaccine to hopefully reduce their risk of having monkeypox. Otherwise, if you don't have a known exposure, but if you have a fever, if you have a rash, um, that's something that you would want to get evaluated. Now, again, this rash can look different for different people. It tends to start off as flat lesions, and then it can progress to what looks like little bumps or pimples, and then move into blisters before it starts to scab over and then eventually fall off with new skin, kind of like what you see with someone with chicken pox. The rash can be really painful initially, and then as it starts to scab and fall off, it can be really itchy in, in most situations. Testing for monkeypox right now is through a PCR test, but it's PCR testing of skin lesions. So you have to have the skin lesion or rash be, to be able to be tested. And so the provider will take a swab and swab the top of the rash a couple of times, and then that, those swabs will be sent off to the specialized lab where they do PCR testing to confirm that it's monkeypox. So monkeypox can actually be caused by a couple of different strains. Fortunately, the strain that's causing this current global outbreak in the cases in the United States is causing milder infections and known to cause milder infections. So fortunately, most people that get monkeypox actually have the symptoms that go away and they don't end up in the hospital. And actually in this United States outbreak, there haven't been any deaths so far. So it's not as serious as it could be. Um, and fortunately, most people don't end up in the hospital, but it's still something to be aware of. Monkeypox can have scars. So anytime you have a viral infection that causes a rash, there's a potential that you could get an infection of the rash, you could get scars from that, similar to having chicken pox or other viruses that cause a rash. But most people actually don't. The, the lesions will resolve, they'll scab, they'll cross over and the new skin will form. And it doesn't seem to cause long lasting symptoms like we hear about with long COVID. So obviously we'll need to continue to follow this monkeypox outbreak. This is a little bit different than monkeypox infections we've seen in the past, but so far we're not seeing long lasting symptoms other than disease itself lasts for about two to four weeks. But after it's resolved, people are not complaining right now of long lasting symptoms. There is treatment for monkeypox. Most people fortunately in this outbreak have not required treatment. They've just had supportive care, which means you know, they stay hydrated, they rest at home, um, and they take you know, maybe some ibuprofen or Tylenol is needed for pain or fever, but they haven't required specific treatment. There is a treatment available through the CDC. Um, and this treatment is actually approved for smallpox, and it's in the national stockpiles in case we had an outbreak of smallpox, which fortunately we do not have. But it can also be used to treat monkeypox. And it's really reserved for people that have severe cases of monkeypox. So if it was a rare case that ended up in the hospital or an immunocompromised person or somebody that had skin lesions in a, in a place that was causing problems. So if you had them in the throat and were unable to eat or drink, that might be a person that would be a good candidate for treatment. In which case, the provider would apply through the CDC to get this medication so that we could treat. And it comes in both a pill form that you can take by mouth or through an IV. So you can give it in a couple of different ways. So there is treatment, but again, fortunately, most people have not required treatment. This is a great question. How is monkeypox transmitted from person to person? And there's still some ongoing study with this outbreak, so we can have a better understanding of that. The predominant way it's being spread in this current outbreak 
is by prolonged skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone that has lesions of monkeypox. And so this can happen with kind of close encounters, intimate encounters, uh, during uh, sexual encounters, but it's actually the skin-to-skin -skin itself, not like what we normally think of with sexually transmitted diseases where it's being transmitted by other bodily fluids. There's still ongoing research to see what other bodily fluids contain monkeypox. It can also be transmitted if there is uh, contaminated bed sheets or clothing from somebody that has the, the monkeypox lesions, those pustules can have fluid in them, in them, and if that fluid uh, contaminates skin or sheets and then someone handles those skin or sheets, that's another potential avenue of getting infected. And then it can be tr transmitted by respiratory droplets, large respiratory droplets, but it's not clear how effective it's transmitted in that way. And a good way to kind of point that out is right now they haven't had so far in the outbreak with these contact tracings found anybody that's contracted monkeypox from a casual conversation with somebody else. And then even with somebody that's traveled in an airplane close to somebody else with monkeypox, they haven't seen transmission that way or through healthcare encounters either. So respiratory doesn't seem to be as effective a means. Um, it'd be something you'd be concerned about for household contact. Someone that spends prolonged, extensive time talking to somebody closely potentially could be a method of, of transmission that way. So monkeypox, fortunately, it's an envelope virus, it, which means that it actually responds really readily to disinfectants. So it's an envelope virus, kind of like SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, or influenza virus, which causes the flu. All of those respond really well to EPA-registered disinfectants. And so it's important if you're going to disinfect surfaces in your house to just check the label. There's an EPA registered number on there. You can see if it's registered for that. If it's active against flu, it's going to be active against monkeypox. For other things, you can use... Um, Hand hygiene is important, so doing, you know, so washing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based you know, hand rub. Um, and then for, for silverware plates, it's important that you can use the dishwasher, right? So you don't have to use separate utensils. For, if someone else in the house had monkey pox and you were trying not to get it yourself, it's okay if you run it through the dishwater, dishwasher with hot water and detergent, or if you hand wash it with hot water and soap. So it, fortunately, it responds really readily to standard disinfectants, standard practices that we use to clean our house. That's a great question. How long should you stay out if you have monkeypox infection? So one of the challenges with monkeypox infection is that it lasts for a while. And so really a person can potentially be transmissible from the skin lesions, which again is the predominant way, the major way that someone sh transmits it to somebody else, until those skin lesions have scabbed over, fallen off, and new skin has grown there. And that can take around two to four weeks in an average case of monkeypox. So people are potentially transmissible that time period. Now, the CDC ideally would like somebody to stay home that whole time period, but really, practically speaking, that may not be feasible. So what's important if someone leaves the house, if they have to go to the grocery store or something else, is that they keep all those skin lesions covered. So they can wear long sleeves, they can wear pants, wear gloves. It's also recommended that if they're going to have prolonged face-to-face -face contact with somebody, a person with monkeypox should wear a well-fitting, proper mask. So if they're going to be talking with a family member, they should wear a mask. Or if they're going for a healthcare visit and going to be spending extended time with a provider, they should wear a mask, which a lot of us are doing with now with COVID anyway. So the, the short answer is two to four weeks potentially depends on those skin lesions. Genios is the vaccine that's currently available and recommended for preventing monkeypox. The challenge is that there's not a huge supply of that right now. So the vaccine manufacturer is working on making more Genios vaccines so that we can distribute it more widely in the United States and globally so we can kind of cut down this outbreak faster. The initial dosing of this Genios vaccine, it's a two-dose vaccine. You give a dose and then four weeks later you give a second dose. And it was studied by giving it through the subcutaneous tissue, which is the layer of fat right underneath the skin, which like a standard vaccine. So you go right underneath the skin into the fat. However, they've studied and seen that if you give that injection in the skin layer itself, so you don't go through to the fat, but you actually stop in the skin layer, you can actually still get a good immune response, but you can use less vaccine. You can actually use one fifth or 20% of the vaccine amount and still get a good response. And by doing that, we can extend the limited vaccine supply we have by five. And so because of that, it's recommended for people that are age 18 and older that are getting the monkeypox vaccine, that it be administered in, in the skin layer itself and not all the way through to the fat underneath it. So we can use these smaller doses so we can have more doses for everybody.